Do you remember when the first Hobbit movie came out with that weird high frame rate of 48 frames per second? Right away, people were talking about feeling motion sick and nauseous after watching it. And it's strange because, you know, video games have a standard of 60 frames per second and we've never really had that problem. And a lot of people have speculated as to why or how that might have occurred with the movie, but today I want to talk about this issue a little more generally. Can frame rate actually cause motion sickness? And if so, why? Now, as far as I can find, there hasn't been a definitive study controlling frame rate and measuring the resulting motion sickness. Then again, I don't know how easy I'd be able to get ethics to make people feel sick. But I actually think there's enough information out there that we can kind of piece together an answer to this question. So first, let's start from the beginning. What is motion sickness? Well, it's a feeling of dizziness, nausea, and eventual vomiting that people experience caused by motion. Maybe you felt this by trying to read in a car or while traveling by boat. In fact, the word nausea comes from the Greek word nots or nos, meaning sailor or boat. Actually, we can narrow down this phenomenon to occurring in environmental frequencies operating at around 0.2 Hertz. Now, maybe you're not familiar with thinking about things in terms of frequencies, so let me make this a little more intuitive. Frequency is defined by the number of cycles occurring per unit of time. In hertz, that unit of time is seconds. So when I say that my screen's refresh rate is 120 hertz, what I'm actually saying is that my screen can refresh its image 120 times per second. And when I say that a rocking motion of 0.2 hertz makes you feel sick, that rocking motion is completing 0.2 or one fifth of a cycle per second. Or in other words, it takes five seconds to complete a whole cycle. So why would this kind of motion cause sickness? Well, the prevailing theory is that it can cause sensory conflict. The main senses at play here are vision and your vestibular system, which is your sense of motion and acceleration. In both your ears are tiny labyrinths of bony tubes that are able to detect linear and angular acceleration. It's tied very closely to your vision and movement. For instance, have you noticed how you can rotate your head and still stare at a single point? Well, that's thanks to your direct network between your eye's muscles and your vestibular system, which coordinates your head's rotation with how much your muscles need to compensate. So with these two systems so closely linked together, it's no surprise that your brain is very, very sensitive to when they're giving conflicting information. So then the next question is, why are they giving conflicting information? I think this is easier to understand once you consider that humans don't just react to the environment, we actively predict and anticipate it. Every second we're analyzing, planning motions, predicting outcomes, executing those motions, and then error checking to see if anything's not matching up. So what's most likely happening is that those slower rates of motion, it becomes harder for our visual and vestibular systems to make predictions. They're not as good at those slow speeds since normally things happen around us at a much faster rate. So the predictions don't always match up and when that happens, you get sensory conflict. And the last question you might have is, well, why would that make you feel sick? Well, the most popular theory is that the sensory conflict might be a cue or an indicator that you've been poisoned. In which case, all those symptoms make a lot of sense. Your brain wants you to get that stuff out of your body and to build up an aversion to whatever you had, so it makes you feel awful and throw that shit up. It's worth noting, as always, that there are other theories that can explain this, but you know, it's a pretty good theory. So that was a good primer on motion sickness. What does frame rate have to do with any of this? Well, like I said before, there's no definitive study on this, but let's see what we can piece together. I found this article by Chenna Throp from 2007 looking at the effect of low frame rates on motion sickness. Here, they say that extremely low frame rates and their associated visual lag can lead to cue conflict, which has been shown to induce motion sickness, which is what we were talking about before. What they did find is that low frame rates, as low as five to 10 frames per second, can seriously impede on human performance. Humans typically need around 15 frames per second to be able to perform adequately. Maybe experts can get away with 10 frames per second, but you know, really people need upwards of 15 to 30. Now there was something interesting back there. Extremely low frame rates and their associated visual lag. See at its core, frame rate alone probably isn't the problem here. I mean, you can have a video like this at an extremely low frame rate and it not make you sick. Even if you're moving around, it's not necessarily the low frame update speed that's causing motion sickness. But if you have low frame rate, you also have a high chance of experiencing visual lag. And if that low frame rate is caused by an underpowered system, there are likely other processing problems going on as well. It's not just that the frame update is slow, it's that the game itself is slow. This isn't even just about low frame rates. You can have the same situation with a high frame rate, but high variability. And what happens when your prediction of motion doesn't match up with your experience? Sensory conflict. This isn't to say that motion sickness can't occur with bad FPS alone. Say you're playing a first person game and you're looking all around you. 
very quickly, especially if it's in a VR game. With a low frame rate, the information you're getting when you're looking around is going to be blurry, messy, and choppy. It becomes much harder to interact with the world when everything spins around you when you look around. It's disorientating, and it can cause sensory conflict. So as it turns out, latency is an important factor to keep in mind alongside frame rate. Even the difference between 90 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds can have a big impact on your performance. Okay, so what if you have a game that has high frame rate with no latency? It runs perfectly well. Can you get motion sickness from that? A while ago, YouTuber and fellow dragon enthusiast Dragnix asked about motion sickness on Twitter for his review on Gravity Rush 2. In the video, he mentioned something interesting comparing the new game to the remastered original game. See, Gravity Rush 2 is locked at 30 FPS, but Gravity Rush Remastered goes up to 60 FPS. His theory was that 30 FPS might actually help with motion sickness. And sure enough, after going back to view footage of the first game at 60 FPS, he found himself getting sick. So what's going on here? Because I don't think the previous ideas we had really apply in this situation. Well, I think, I'm not sure, but I think, this might be more related to how The Hobbit made people feel sick with its 48 FPS. What's the difference between footage rendered at 30 FPS and 60 FPS? When they're standing still, there is no difference. But when things are in motion, the higher frame rates gives a lot more details to all those things moving around. Basically, lower frame rates kind of introduces its own blur effect, especially in the background. In real life, the world around you produces a constant stream of light for your eyes to take in, but not everything is in focus. If you're moving around and turning your head, keeping something in focus, that thing in focus, it's going to be in detail with clarity, but the background's gonna blur out. Not only is that light falling outside your fovea, the part of the back of the retina that has the highest clarity, but you're not processing that information. We have our own kind of internal motion blur. So let's try a small experiment. I'm gonna take footage from Gravity Rush Remastered and apply motion blur to it to see if it's easier to process. Here's my reasoning. If you're moving around like the camera does in Gravity Rush, the entire world wouldn't be in clarity. Only what you're focused on would be, even though everything in the world is producing a steady stream of light. But when you're sitting down, you don't have that naturally generated motion blur because you're not in motion. And so I think when you have a high frame rate game or video, if the moving backgrounds and environments are always clear, you're actually getting too much information. It's too clear. Low frame rates of 24 FPS or 30 FPS for games kind of automatically takes care of this problem. But with high frame rate games, I think you need to add a bit of motion blur to make it easier on your brain. Not too much because then we run into the problem about disorientation, but enough so that you can't and aren't focusing on the background details when everything is spinning around you. Adding motion blur after the fact isn't perfect, but Personally, I think the game looks better. But let's put it to a test. What do you guys think? Does adding motion blur make the game easier to watch? I'm gonna open up a poll, so please vote and let me know. To answer the question of the video as simply as possible, yes, frame rates can cause motion sickness, but there are a few ways it happens. First is visual lag, and that can occur with low frame rates, especially in VR, or with in inconsistent and variable frame rates. The second is when high frame rates leads to way too much clarity in the background details, but that's more of my own idea, so take it with a grain of salt. If you guys have any information or details about this, please let me know, we can discuss. Especially if you have any more research, I don't think I found everything. 